You may be noticing that all these templates revolve around the same block of code, the loop, with very little variation. Experienced developers might be wondering if there's a way to make this process reflect dry principles. Dry stands for don't repeat yourself, and it's the opposite of wet coding, write everything 10,000 times. You're in luck because there's some core functionality that can help with that in template parts. Template parts are smaller blocks of code that can be loaded within the template file to handle just a particular aspect of that page. Where this really comes in handy is abstracting the WordPress loop and wrapping those in a query post function to alter the query based on whatever criteria, or do a check for a post type or a post format and display a certain template based on the results. Some really good examples of template parts can be found in the 2011 theme and in Museum Core. Another way you can use template parts is for content that is only supposed to display to some types of visitors, but not all, especially if that content is going to appear across multiple pages. Let's take some time to implement these things that I've just introduced. Since adding core WordPress theme functionality mostly takes place in the functions.php, we're going to start there. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new function called Plural Site Setup Theme. I'm going to tie this function to the after setup theme hook so that when that function is run at the time WordPress executes, which is immediately when it starts loading up the theme stuff, it will run my plural site setup theme function. Inside this function, I'm going to add all my core functionality calls, my add theme supports, and my nav menus. The automatic feed link support doesn't require any additional coding and neither does the custom backgrounds since that happens in the WordPress dashboard. But the post thumbnails do need some additional coding after we've added that functionality to actually use and display the post thumbnails. I'll need to edit a couple templates, any archive templates and the index.php template, to add support for post thumbnails. But I want to use template parts, so I'm creating a parts directory and I'm changing the index.php to remove what's inside the loop and replace it with a get template part function. I'm adding support for post formats, which we haven't talked about yet. Post formats allow the user to publish a blog post in one of a selection of different formats, much the same way that on Tumblr you can post a quote, a text post, a chat, an image, or a video. These post formats can then be styled differently on the front end. For our theme, we'll do this with templates parts as well. So in my index.php, first I need to get the post format, and then I'm using that post format to determine which template part to use. In this way, I can display a completely different template part based on what post format the post was published in. For now, let's just look at the regular format, which is going to default to just post.php. I add my checked for the post thumbnail, and if it's found, display the thumbnail. If there's no thumbnail found, no image displays. I've changed the content to the excerpt, so only an excerpt of the post displays. Taking a look at the search.php form, you can see that that's calling template parts in much the same way that the index.php. In fact, with the exception of having the search form at the bottom, the search.php is almost identical to index.php. Next, I'm going to add the custom header. First, I'll set up the arguments, which is just defining the height and the width of the header and also making it a flexible height, but not a flexible width. Then using the add theme support function, I add the custom header functionality, which will add the dashboard menu under appearance. I'll need to edit the header.php next to handle supporting the image or not. First, I'm doing a check for the header image. If there's a header image, I need to change where the site name goes because I want that to be on top of the image. So if there's a header image, I'm adding a class to the header element. Then I add my header image. If there's no header image found, I still open the header element, but I don't add the extra class. While we've got the header.php open, let's take a look at the last piece of core functionality we're adding, the nav menus. Back over in functions.php, we're registering two nav menus, one in the footer and one in the header. Over in the header.php, we'll call the correct nav menu by making sure we're using header for the theme location. Because I'm basing this theme on Twitter Bootstrap, there are some classes that are being added to utilize the navigation menus built into Bootstrap, as well as a custom PHP class that extends one of the core WordPress functions. I'm not going to go into this in detail because it's outside the scope of this lesson and specific to Bootstrap. But you can find some documentation at the link that is posted on the screen. We're going to jump down to the footer.php where I've added my other menu, and this nav menu looks a lot simpler and more straightforward because I'm not pulling in any special bootstrap styling, and I'm just using the nav pills class. Now I'm going to add another function that I'll hook into WP Enqueue scripts, which is fired when WordPress renders all the scripts on the page. In this function, we're going to enqueue jQuery, which is built into WordPress core, and we're enqueuing the bootstrap JavaScript and modernizer. 
Both Bootstrap JS and Modernizer JS are new scripts that are unique to this theme, so I need to include the location for both of those JavaScript files which I've placed in the JS folder in the theme. While I'm here, I'm also enqueuing the comment reply script, which is also built into WordPress and is used for displaying threaded comments. Finally, I'm going to throw all of my CSS in here, including a new font from Google Web Fonts, which have added to the style.css and the bootstrap CSS files. I'm adding the themes style.css here as well. This means that all of these scripts and styles will get added to any other scripts and styles that are being added by plugins, and we don't have to worry about adding that to the header.php. I want to customize the output of my comments, so I'm adding a new plural side comment function. This function is handling the actual comment output, comment author box, and reply buttons. Over on comments.php, I pull this function in by adding callback equals plural side comment in the WP list comments function. Another new template we'll add is the 404 template that's used when someone hits a page that doesn't exist. I've added some links here to get users back on track and a message that's a little more friendly to display when they hit a 404 page. For fun, I've added a new full width template to give you an idea of how custom template files can be used. This is just an alternate page template that removes the sidebar so people can have their page content display uninterrupted. Last, let's take a look at the author.php template. This template is being used to display the author information. If you take a look at the post single.php's template part, we're displaying a link to the author in the post meta. So this is the page that will come up when someone clicks on that link. If any of these fields don't exist, they don't display, but if they do exist, they'll display more profile information about the author of the post. All of this data is coming from the author metadata in the database and is fetched with the get the author meta function. This template file also uses multiple loops. One loop is getting the author information and a second loop is pulling up all the posts for that author. In between the two loops, I need to reset the query so the second loop doesn't just continue from where the first one left off. Author pages are one of my favorite things to code and are vastly underused.